you know, if you look at broad money supply in the United States this year or, or bank deposits this year, they're actually flat. Usually money supply growth is, you know, maybe 7% per year on average. Uh, it spiked over 25% during the height of the 2020 and 2021 stimulus. Uh, but now it's, it's you know, basically running at 0%. And so that's a that's a tough environment for Bitcoin and you know other assets in the ecosystem. Anything 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 is kind of conce considered risk on or speculative in any way. Um, but I think that eventually, when you get to a part where the Fed is unable to keep tightening, um, and you you kind of have a, that shift in liquidity, uh, then I, I I think the space uh, and, and, and you know Bitcoin especially, and we'll see what happens with other projects. I think that gives them another opportunity for another leg up. Longer term, the way I would phrase it is that I don't think the Fed's going to be able to normalize interest rates. And what I, what I mean by normalize is, you know, if you look back at history, more often than not, interest rates were higher than the prevailing inflation rate. Basically, you, you, you know, you'd earn uh, interest on your treasuries or your bank deposits uh, at, at a rate that was higher than a headline CPI. Um, and for the most of the past decade, that's not been true. Only for very brief periods of time has that been true. Most, mostly we've been in a negative interest rate environment. And of course, with inflation this high and interest rates still this low, uh, that, that, you know, that hit pretty extreme levels here in, in 2022. And so, you know, they're going to tighten policy. But I think the biggest challenge is that they're going to be unable to, quote unquote, normalize policy, which means to get back to a period of structural positive rates. And that's because of how much debt is in the system. So if you look at, at public debt and private debt in the United States, it's about 370% of GDP. And you have similarly high numbers in, the, in Europe and Japan, right? So, so a lot of the major uh, developed countries have an inability to get to you know, positive real rates and hold it there. And if that's true, and, and I think it is, then that is, that is bullish for more scarce assets in the long term. Which, which would include, you know, certain types of equities uh, and things like that, but also, you know, includes uh, Bitcoin and any, any other project that is, you know, going to stick around and grow for a long period of time. And so, but if you look in the near term, for example, you know, if you look at broad money supply in the United States this year or, or bank deposits this year, they're actually flat, uh, you know, all all year to date here in 2022. So it's ironically, the dollar has been less inflationary than Bitcoin, you know, with like an eight month, uh, snapshot, and of course, that's that's that significantly you know deviates from the normal trend. Usually, money supply growth is you know maybe seven percent per year on average. Um, but I think that eventually, when you get to a part where the Fed is unable to keep tightening, um, and you you kind of have a, that shift in liquidity, uh, then I, I I think the space uh, and, and you know Bitcoin especially, and we'll see what happens with other projects. I think that gives them another opportunity for another leg up. But that could, that could take you know quite some time to get to. So I think so. There's a couple things to look for together. Uh, and so one thing I like to point out is that if you look at, at the purchasing managers index, the PMI, uh, that is a, a kind of a measure uh, of whether an economy is accelerating or decelerating. And so if it's above 50, it means it's, you know, it's, it's growing. And, you know, if it's, you know, 55 or 60, then it's growing quite quickly. And if it's below 50, it means it's shrinking. And if it's below, you know, 45, it means it's, it's, it's shrinking pretty severely. And Generally, when you look at PMI cycles for most countries, you'll see something like a three-year cycle. It looks like it looks like a sine wave uh, going across. And if you map Bitcoin's price onto the U.S. PMI, you have a pretty strong correlation. Generally, rising PMI environments, basically periods of economic growth, uh, that's when you're getting a, a positive uh, Bitcoin price. When you have a declining PMI, you generally have uh, weaker. Uh, or, or outright falling Bitcoin prices. Uh, and of course, there's there's high correlation across the whole whole digital asset space. Um, so if you look at, for example, the 2017 bull run, the Fed was tightening policy throughout that entire time. They were raising rates throughout the entire 2017 bull run, but they were doing so at a time when uh, uh, PMIs were, were going straight up. So you had, you know, you had fiscal stimulus happening from, you know, unfunded tax cuts. Uh, and then you had, um, you know, the Fed trying to tighten policy. And that was a, that was a very risk on environment. So emerging markets did well, Bitcoin did well, cryptos did well, uh, stock market in general did well, pretty much risk assets across the board did well, despite the fact that the Fed was tightening because they were they were tightening in a way that made sense relative to that economic cycle. The challenge that they ran into by, say, late 2018 was that the economy rolled over and they were still tightening. And that's when they started to run into turbulence and they eventually had to pause. Um, and what we're seeing now is kind of similar where 
you know, except even even more shifted back where they didn't even start tightening until we already got the rollover in the PMI. Uh, and so now they're tightening policy into a declining uh, economic environment. And I think that's the toxic combination that until that ends is, is pretty challenging to get a, a significant and sustained rally, uh, you know, in, in Bitcoin and the rest of the space. So generally speaking over the past, you know, three cycles, if you map Bitcoin price relative to broad money supply growth, uh, it's actually a very strong correlation. You know, Bitcoin does exactly what it, you'd expect it to. If, if, if dollars are being expanded at a higher than normal pace, Bitcoin is usually doing quite well as a scarce asset. What we saw is that, you know, during 2020 and 2021, we had the fastest money supply growth uh, in decades. Uh, and Bitcoin uh, did amazing, uh, along with most other risk assets. And this year to date, you know, we've had complete cessation of money supply growth in the United States. Uh, and so it's not surprising that we had a rollover in, in assets that are basically, you know, marketing themselves as, as these, you know, scarce and inflation resistant assets. And the challenges that the, the actual price increases we're seeing, especially around energy, are happening with a lag from that money supply growth. So, you know, a, a lot of financial assets felt the effects of that money supply growth before all these price impacts happened. And now these price impacts are happening and people are saying, well, why didn't Bitcoin protect me from inflation? And the, the main two ones are one that it already did. It's just that, you know, in the core of what triggered inflation happened a year or two ago, and Bitcoin was responding to that. Another issue, I think, is that the word hedge normally describes paying off in the specific moment that something happens, right? So if you, uh, you know, short a stock and then the stock market goes down, uh, you're, it's paying off in that moment. So, you know, when it comes to inflation, normally the things that pay off the best in the moment are ownership stakes in the things that are driving that inflation, which in, in most cases is energy and energy related types of assets. So those are generally the best types of hedges you're going to get against inflation uh, because they're going to go up specifically at the time where that inflation is happening. The way I would describe Bitcoin is that it's more like long term protection from inflation because you're basically buying into a long term scarce asset against an asset that is historically growing and talk about the dollar here talk growing at seven percent a year or more